بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله عليه ذات عظيم صفات سمي سمات كبير الشان جليل القدر وفي عذك المطاع أمي جليل البرهان فخيم الاسم غزير العلم وسير حلم كثير الغفران جميل الثناء جزيل العطاء مجيب الدعاء من الإحسان سريع الحساب شديد العقاب أليم العذاب عزيز السلطان ونشد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له في الخلق والأمر ونشد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد فقد قال الله تبارك وتعالى في القرآن المجيد والفرقان الحميد بعد عوض بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وقل اعملوا فسير الله عبركم ورسوله والمؤمنون واستردون إلى عالم الغيب والشهادة فينبئكم بما كنتم تعملون صدق الله العظيم فإن أسق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر أمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار أما بعد Respected brothers and sisters we are going through the holiday season and in most cases the children of our community are usually in school at this time since they are here today and most of the adults are off and a lot of people are off from work because of, you know there was Christmas few days ago and some people may get off I want to talk about something in particular that is relevant to all ages sometimes khutbas are given the topics are relevant only to adults sometimes the topic are only relevant to the youth but today's topic is something that's relevant to all demographics of the community and all ages of the community it is volunteering the importance of volunteering in our own masajid it is very it's well known that for anything to go well and for anything to progress and for anything to be beneficial it has to be done properly for example you want to make a cake you need the proper ingredients in order to bake a cake instead of putting sugar or it says that if you put you need to put only this much oil if you were to put more oil than is recommended then the taste of the cake will not come out the way it needs to be in any organization even in a business or in a job we have a job description if we are an employee we have a job description for those who own businesses there are certain guidelines and certain principles that they have to follow not once but on a consistent basis if followed that business will prosper it will benefit the person and it will pay off dividends in the same exact way for any organization and when I talk about masjid and volunteering inside a masjid it is not only regarding the masjid but if you study books and you read books regarding any faith-based organizations all faith-based organizations are, are dependent and they progress they benefit others in the community they are efficient only when there are volunteers involved this is not only with the masjid this is with all faith-based organizations why because volunteering is the lifeblood of any community it is because of the volunteers in the community that they're able to help the masjid or help their own organization to create events conferences social services and which we have talked about in the past that during the time of Rasulullah the masjid was not only the place where they would come and they would worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it played an important role when it came to social services when it came to helping out others the masjid played a key role so people in the community who volunteer and they help out in social services that's also from the volunteers also when it comes to da'wa when it comes to da'wa efforts the import the the volunteers play an important role when it comes to giving da'wa and why i talk about volunteering is because people who are paid in any organization they only make up only a part of that organization you have you go to a church and you find out there are several people who are employed the minister or the pastor he will be employed there may be an office assistant she he or she may be employed you have one or two other people who are employed but besides that an entire church also runs on volunteers 
So a lot of people are under the impression that in a church, why in a masjid is hard to find volunteers? It's because everyone in a church is everyone is paid. That's a misconception. That is a misconception. I've been to many churches. I've sat down with rabbis. I've sat down with pastors. And this is a question that I've always asked them. And they will say that we have a huge support group because of which our churches are existing. Because if it was not for them, it would not exist. Well, I don't need them to come and tell me this. This is just for me, for my, for, for confirmation purposes. The example we find of this is in the life of Rasulullah Wasallam. The Prophet he was sent as the final prophet. He was given a responsibility. He had a goal, he had a vision, and he was put on a mission. And in order to fulfill that mission, he needed a support group. He needed a support group. The first three years of the life of Rasulullah Wasallam, after being given Nabuwa in prophethood, the Prophet did not go out right away and he would say, everyone accept, accept, uh, believe in Allah, accept Islam. No, the Prophet, the Prophet Wasallam, for the first three years, the first three years, all he did was secret invitation. That's all he did. He secretly invited everyone. After a while, when he did have a support group, when he did have a support group, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows that now this is the time where if the Prophet sallam, he were to go out, now he has a support group, he has people in the community who have volunteered their time, the Prophet sallam, has support, now you go and you give da'wah. That is why when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he told the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that wa'mur ahlaka bis salati wa stabil alayha. He tells the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that now you go and you inform your family members. You go and you warn others also now. And even though there was opposition, but slowly and gradually, we see that Islam spread, Islam gained its roots, and it gained strength over time because of all the people who contributed to the effort of Rasulullah It was the Sahaba radiallahu anhum, and to, just to clarify, well, a lot of times when we hear Sahaba radiallahu anhum, we are under the assumption that these Sahaba were very, very old. They were in their 40s, they were probably in their 50s. But SubhanAllah, if you study the leaders of the believers, the leaders of the believers, people who became governors, the main Sahaba radiallahu who surrounded the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam day in and day out, they were young people. These were Sahaba radiallahu anhu who accepted Islam when they were 16 years old, 17 years old. 18, 19, 20 years old. They were the young ones of the community who did, who were developed by Rasulullah who contributed to Islam. And we know from where, from who the Prophet was, the Prophet was their leader, he was their teacher, he developed them, they became leaders, and Islam continued to go on. Islam continued to go on. So the main point I'm trying to make is, even though Rasulullah was the leader, without the support and the volunteering of the Sahaba anhum, Islam would have not reached the point where it is today. Islam would have never reached that point. It was because of Sahaba anhum. We see that, as I said earlier, that the Prophet not only, he, not only did he focus on ibadat, not only did he focus on imaniyat, but he focused upon helping out others, giving support in your masjid, and taking an active role. So that's why it is so important that in our masajid, in our masajid, each one of us, we have particular talents. And this is subhanAllah, this is who Rasulullah was. He was able to identify the talents of every single person. That this person, he has talents in this, in this area, and in this area, he is weak. The Prophet ﷺ was not there to point out at the weaknesses of everyone. He was there to point out at the strengths. He would take everyone in the community and he would use them to their talents. So we see that Umar who he was before Islam and who he was after Islam, the Prophet ﷺ used his talents in particular ways. Whenever he would, he would use Abu Bakr He would utilize his talents. Whenever there was any sister in the community, the Prophet would utilize their talents. The Prophet this is what he did. 
So that's why what I want to, the reason I'm mentioning this is because when the subject of volunteering comes around in our in our community, everyone wants to back out. Why no, I'm not I'm not fit for this. I'm not fit for this. Remember that the hadith of Rasulullah that man Allah, whoever is humble, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will elevate them. That if a person uses this hadith in this situation, that I don't want to volunteer. Why? Because I want to be humble. You have not understood the hadith of Rasulullah. There is a time and a place to use that hadith. There's a time and a place that you use a hadith. What, has it did it ever happen? During the time of Rasulullah where he did reach out for the help of the Sahaba and they came to the Prophet and they said, no, we can't do this. Yes, the Sahaba, a lot of times questions were put to the Sahaba, they knew the answer, but out of simple, out of respect for the Prophet, peace be upon him, they would say, Allah wa Rasuluhu A'la. In many cases, they did that, but they knew the answer, but just because of respect for Rasulullah, they would not do that. Each one of us, we have talents. We have talents in our communities. The adults have talents. Our youngsters in our community, they have so much to offer. They have so much to offer in our community also. But what happens is that when the subject of volunteering comes around, everyone wants to back out. Why? Because I'm not fit for this. Respected brothers and sisters, think about it. If every person backs out, who's going to run the community? I mean, eventually, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will run the masjid. This is the house of Allah. This is the house of Allah. Allah will run it. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as we see in the hadith of Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that first you tie your camel, and then you do tawakkuna, then you do, then you rely on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We need people in the community to contribute, then the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will come. Then the help of Allah will come. Allah could have just mentioned, um, فيكون, and Islam would have spread throughout the four corners of this world. But it was not like that. The Sahaba عنهم, they contributed, they volunteered, they gave their support to Rasulullah and then Allah, He helped out. So if we want our masjid to go forward, if we want our masjid to progress, then we have to volunteer. And the best way, the best way to understand this also is that look at your own house. Each one of us, we have a place to live. We have our homes, our apartments, wherever we're living. But because we, t we, you know, the way we look at it is, it's our house, it's my house. It's my place where I live. It's my job. It's my business. So when it comes to anything that is my or ours, we take it very seriously. But when it comes to the masjid, we don't, we don't associate, we don't put that word as my to my masjid. We need to say that this is my masjid. The amount of seri seriousness I have when it comes to taking care of my home and pushing my home forward and pushing my family forward, the same attitude should apply when it comes to the masjid also. So therefore, there's, one, there's, some, there's two things I've collected. First of all, I want to share with you that when a person does volunteer in the masjid, what do they gain? The very first thing is that it causes, it helps you, any person who volunteers in the masjid, it helps them to be organized in their life. One thing that we learn from Rasulullah Wasallam, and it is unfortunate, it is very unfortunate that most of our Muslim countries, Muslim businesses, Muslim organization and Islamic organizations, when it comes to this, we lack, and that is being organized. The Prophet ﷺ has taught us how to be organized in life. You read a lot of books that stress upon the importance of being organized. When you look at big, big businesses, for example, when you look at Apple or any other business on the face of this earth, what is one thing they're very particular about and which has pushed their business to the next level? It is being organized. It is organization. And so one thing that it will help, if any person or if any person volunteers, they, it helps them to be organized. A lot of people are not organized in their life. And I always mention this, I teach at a school, I always tell the students, I always tell the youngsters, keep a track of your time, be organized in your life, because if you are organized, you know and you, you will know where your time is being spent, and most certainly you will be efficient in your life. It helps you be organized. 
Number two is that it, encourage, it, it, it encourages self-assessment. By volunteering, we see that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, there were many volunteers during the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. If he saw any one of them doing something in the way it was not ordered, or they were not following instructions, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he would provide only one thing. And that was constructive criticism. Not criticism, because a lot of times what happens in any organization, we are very, we are very open to criticize others. You're not doing this, you're not doing this, you're not doing this, you're not doing this. The Prophet ﷺ, he would provide, but he would provide only constructive criticism with wisdom and with the, abs with the absolute amount of respect. The Prophet ﷺ, we would never find in the seat of the Prophet ﷺ where he would provide constructive criticism and he was rude with someone. He was never rude to anyone. Forget about family members, forget about volunteers. He would never even treat a slave like that also. He would never even treat a slave. So it is important that when we are when we are volunteering, we provide, we can provide constructive criticism, but I mean we can provide constructive criticism only, but we should not be the very first ones of criticizing others. We have to see that how can we make others around us better. That should be the focal point. And not only that, the reason I also mentioned this is because when people provide constructive criticism, then this should help us to become a better person. See, what happens with most of us, and I'm going to be upfront about this, when anyone comes to us and tells us that you are doing something wrong, you are doing something which is not the right way, the very first thing that we do is that we become defensive. We become defensive. No, you are wrong. You are wrong. No, I'm right. You are wrong. We get into fights. No person wants to hear. And why have we become like this? If someone comes to us and says that you should have done this in this way, and inshallah, do it better the next time. Someone is providing constructive criticism. They're being polite about it. Why can we not accept this? The Sahabat of Allah, they were provided constructive criticism, they accepted it. People would come to Rasulullah and they would say things to the Prophet which were, which were sometimes disrespectful. The Prophet he would keep his cool, he would, be, he would be calm about it. But at the same time, how many times the Sahabat of Allah, they came, they provided their own opinion, and the Prophet never said anything. This is who the Prophet was. He never, he would never disrespect anyone and even, and even when he would provide criticism, constructive criticism, the Sahaba, they would accept it. We really need to change ourselves. The problem is not someone else, the problem is us. It's me, myself, and I. If someone comes to me and says that you did not do this properly, and if they have a point and they are absolutely true about it, then I need to look at myself and say, you know what, I went wrong. I need to fix this. So if we cannot become defensive, if every person becomes defensive, then there's going to be fights in the community, there's going to be a malice in the community. We have to understand when someone comes to us and says that we have proof and this is this and this is this, if there are conflicts in the community, it's very, it can happen. If you study the psychology behind group networking, it's, gonna, it's bound to happen. Conflicts are gonna happen. Each one of us, we come from different backgrounds. We have a different way of looking at things than others. Conflicts may happen, but let's just say if there is a conflict and someone says that, you know what, after hearing all the evidence, I think there's something wrong and you need to, you know, if you can do this in this way, this will be better. The very first thing a person becomes, he becomes defensive. We need to really stop that. The next thing is that it promotes good and, and, and it promotes uh, it promotes competition within every, within every person. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, we see in the Quran that what drives us to be competitive with each other in this dunya, we have a goal. We have money is our goal, and we push each other for that. This is what promotes us. This is what pushes us to be competitive with each other by volunteering in any organization, especially in the masjid. This will motivate us and this will, will, uh, this will create a sense of competition. It provides a vision and not only that, but it helps for any community to become efficient. I'm gonna give this one example, please come forward. Please come forward. 
when any in any community, what happens is that people they get disrespected. People they 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 are very sensitive. You'll find a lot of people in the community who are very sensitive. People who volunteer in the masjid, they are very sensitive also. We have to be careful about them first. Once again, as I said earlier, when it comes to any organization, we have to have mutual respect. Respect for every single person, brother, sister, young ones. A lot of times we feel like, oh, they're young, we can just tell them whatever we want. No, everyone needs to be respectful towards others. But what happens is that in a lot of organizations, you have a core group of brothers and sisters. And those core group of brothers and sisters, they work diligently, they work very, very hard to make this masjid a better place for everyone else. But what happens is that we, we forget that those same people who are helping out in the masjid, who are volunteering inside the masjid, they have jobs, they have businesses, they have families also. So what happens is that they are then not able to give time to their family, they're not able to really focus on their life also, and what happens is that there's something called the burnout effect. Over time, they get so burnt out that even they have served at, in a position at the masjid after their role is finished, after their time period is over, they are so burnt out that they say that, you know what, I want nothing to do with the masjid. I want nothing to do with the masjid. Why? Because there's a burnout effect. When everyone volunteers and everyone helps out with one another, then this community, then any community does become efficient. Everyone helps out. I'm gonna give you one example. I'm just gonna give you one example. And for those of you who come on Sunday mornings for Salat al-Fajr, you know exactly what I'm talking about here. Every Sunday, we have Sunday school for the most part. Every Sunday, you'll notice that it takes time before there was only one or two brothers of the community, or three, four, who would every Sunday morning, they would take the chairs for one room and they would set out all the chairs for the Sunday school for all the kids to come that day. And how long it would take them? It would take them around half an hour, sometimes half an hour to 45 minutes. So what I did was that, and because of their request, we make announcements that everyone should help out. Everyone should help out. Everyone should come participate and volunteer in helping us setting up Sunday school. Now when everyone helps out, it gets done in no more than five to seven, seven minutes. Everyone is working together. Hearts are coming together. It gets done quicker and we are more efficient. The people, those two, three brothers who are working very, very hard every single morning putting out those chairs, now they're able to sort of save up some energy, give some time, more time at home. Everyone's working together and I can see, you can ask those, who help out on Sunday morning, they will tell you the benefit of it. So when we all volunteer together, then there are many, many benefits as, I, as I've shared with you, but it is important that each one of us, we come to a masjid, we sign up, we volunteer in the masjid, and there are so many different areas. There are so many different areas in the masjid that you can help out. There's social services, there's IT, there's education, there's sisters, there's youth, there is um, facilities. There are so many other committees that we can help out. The Dawah and Outreach Committee needs, needs help. But if we, were, if we sit there and we simply just complain that, you know what, this is a problem. And honestly, I tell you, when people come to me and they say that, oh, you know, this should be done, this should be done, this should be done. I always tell them that, you know what, we need you. If you have all these ideas, come and join the committee. Provide your ideas and inshallah we will work together. It, it does not help anyone if someone comes to the office and say, these are the problems and you don't provide a solution. It does not help anyone else. It does not help anyone. So instead of bringing, instead of, instead of being the one bringing up the problem, bring up, bring up the challenge, bring it up, but then be the one who will be the front runner in trying to solve the problem. And inshallah, when we do this, our hearts will be united. Our masjid, I can guarantee you, our masjid will move and it will be moving forward. We will be progressing together as a community. May Allah give us the ability to act upon what has been said and heard. Barakallahu ala wa lakum fil Qur'an al-Azim wa nafa'na wa iyyakum bil ayat wa dhikr hakim. Astaghfirullah ali wa lakum wa yisa'il muslimin fa astaghfiru inna hu wa al-Ghafur rahim.
الحمد لله الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شر انفسنا من يهدي الله فلا مضل له ومن يضل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اما بعد فقد قال الله تبارك وتعالى في القران المجيد والفرقان الحميد بعد اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ان الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا ايها الذين امنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اما بعد As you have heard, we have talked about the importance of volunteering, and I stress upon also that the best way to push ourselves forward and to motivate ourselves is that always remember that this is the house of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Always remember this is the house of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. When people volunteer, you have no one has the right, no one has the right to boss anyone around. No one has the right to push anyone else's buttons to get under someone's skin. You, no one should be doing that. When we see the life of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, when he brought the Sahaba together, there was mutual love between them. There was mutual love, and always remember that while the Sahaba were working together and collectively, there were some other outside sources who always try to who always try to break up the Sahaba of the Allah Almighty. You had the Munafiqin in Medina who would always try to break up the brotherhood within the Sahaba of the Allah Almighty. We have be between the Muhajirin and the Ansar. So when when a person volunteers in any in, in any masjid, and especially I once again stress that you volunteer and you help out and you become one of the supporters. In that way, always remember that you will be part of any kind of criticism. As I said earlier, that first of all we should not be criticizing. But let's just face it that a lot, and I don't want to be negative here, but it's the reality that a lot of people they love to, the people. There are some people who just love to criticize. There are people. There are people who just love to criticize, and they will criticize in different different ways. Whether it's through cyber networks, whether it's being upfront, they will criticize. The most important thing is that the Sahaba of the Allah Almighty, they were also being distracted by others. But the Sahaba of Allah Almighty, they stuck together, and we see that how Islam progressed. In the same exact way, when you volunteer in any community, people should first of all be, they should not be judgmental towards others, create that love. And if any person, if any person feels like that, you know what, I've not volunteered in such a in such a while, how would I be? How would I be treated if I did come back to the masjid? Always remember, the masjid is, is a place. Where each one of us, we need to open, we need to welcome each other, and open, uh, keep our, you know, doors open for each other. And when people come, try to encourage them, try to encourage others. That's the only way we will move forward as a community. And as I said earlier, that always remember, this is the house of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. And I want you to all of you to ask yourself this one question. I know that when you volunteer in the masjid, sometimes you know family time is taken away. Your individual time is taken away. I fully understand that, and no one is taken away from that. But always remember that if you give time for the sake of Allah, at the house of Allah, for the deen of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, don't you think Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala will take care of your affairs? Ask yourself this question, because it is impossible for anyone to think that if I give time to the masjid. This will be a loss for me. This is never a loss for anyone. Anyone who does anything for the sake of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, for the house of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, for the Deen of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, Allah will always be paying them back. May Allah give us ability to act upon what the Sena heard. Inshallah, after Salat Al Jum'a, um, there will be a table outside. Uh, inshallah, I request and encourage all of you to try to go and sign up. Uh, try to put down your names. And